Well, good morning, good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for joining the Opus uh, Pico Stroke webinar. Uh, my name is Simon Zero. Hello, I'm a BMW Support Technician. Good morning, my name is Steve. I'm a Renault Support Technician. And I'm Lawrence, and I'm a VAT Support Technician. Just before we start, um, just to let you know, everyone, that chat is turned on. So please, if you do have a question, uh, just type it in the chat bar. Uh, we'll try our best to answer it during the webinar itself. Um, if not, uh, if there's anything that we can't get around to, uh, then afterwards there will be an FAQ question and answer sheet uh, that everyone will be emailed afterwards. So anything that we don't answer during the webinar, don't forget, we'll try and catch up in a sheet afterwards. Thank you. Okay, so oh, your pardon, let's just go back a bit. So course aims today. Uh, what is an oscilloscope? Why do we need an oscilloscope in our workshops? Um, we'll talk about downloading the Pico software from their website. Uh, initial setup, uh, basic use of the scope, um, case study, and then some further training options. Right then, so what is an oscilloscope? I mean, most of us have used uh, a piece of uh, a serial uh, tool like the Autologic to diagnose a vehicle. We've used a multimeter to give us a quick uh, sort of idea of what's going on. But uh, a scope is a, an electrical uh, piece of electrical equipment that will analyse and interpret that uh, signal, what's happening on that particular line of the and put it in a graph for us to see. Basically, what the scope does, it converts voltage and it displays it over a time scale. So, uh, most of you still a little picture there. Um, you, 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 it gives it a, a, a nice pattern that we can see. Now, the benefit to this is that we can actually see what is going on uh, on, on the particular component of the test. We can see the amount of voltage that's present. We can see fluctuations in the signal. We'll be able to see if there's noise or interference if the signal disappears. And it's really handy, especially if you're, you're, you have an intermittent form, we can manipulate wires and you can actually see what is going on. Now the graph that you can see, there's two axes. We have the y-axis going up, which is the voltage or the unit of, of measurement that we're going to be looking at. And then down the bottom is the x-axis, which is the time. And these can be adjusted as well, so you can zoom in to see like a very small part of the signal, or you can zoom out to see like the whole, uh, a bigger sort of picture of what's going on. Now the beauty of the Pico scope is that you can actually save these as a PSD format. You can then send them to us and we can open them up and we can look at these and help you guide and guide you through what's actually going on with the signal. You can save them for your own reference. You can even upload these to the Pico reference library for other people to use. And likewise, you can import them from the reference library uh, for you to use uh, and overlay it to see exactly uh, what's going on. So a reference to get that. As you can see here, the, 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 the oscilloscope has, has many uh, benefits and many things you can check. We've got an amp count we can use to check current. We've got a pressure transducer we can use to check pressure. We can then also in, uh, go in and we can show can, we can look at voltage levels. We can, there's many things that oscilloscope do. It's a vital piece of equipment in today's workshop. Just going on and starting about the PicoScope. Uh, versus the live data devices, our serial data uh, that you'd see on a, a serial data recorder, like the Autologic. Serial data typically is only going to give you something that's been filtered through that control module. So already we're not looking at raw data, we're looking at something that the ECU has already interpreted. So we can't be guaranteed that what we're seeing is 100% accurate. It's also very slow. Uh, wheel speeds are a case in point, or even this accelerator pedal as we've got in this example, you're only going to see that live data refresh two, maybe three times a second if that. So any brief, uh, briefly occurring faults, you're very easy to miss those and you may have to uh, check it three, four, multiple times before you can pick a fault code up. What we see on the Pico scope, you can see that refreshing many, many, many hundreds of times a second. And again, as Simon mentioned earlier, you can zoom in on that. So any discrepancy with our patterns that we see on a wire uh, or a component, you're going to see that happen in real time. Even if you blink and miss it, you can go back all through your, your data captures and see the fault when it occurred 
what happened when it occurred. So it's really going to give you a good understanding um, of what we can see. As again, this is this accelerator pedal, uh, two pedal tracks, obviously being a VAG unit. Um, you can see the values there as we press down the accelerator pedal. You can see both tracks going up nice and smoothly and cleanly. Live data wouldn't show you that. It's only going to see that two or three times a second. So we're just going to see a voltage increase. We're not really going to be able to interpret that. That's data we're seeing. Is that correct? Have we missed an implausible signal at any time? If we've got a dirty track with a picoscope, you are going to see that. Okay, so we're going to talk about downloading the Pico software now. Um, even if you haven't got your Pico, you can still download the software, have a look around it and get used to it and get a feel for it. So at the top, you go to the, um, the link, the hyperlink at the top of the page you can see now. Once you've done that, you'll see the two icons that uh, we've got here on the screen. So they'll, they'll be on the screen either on your laptop or, or on your desktop. Okay, so once you've got that, um, and you've got your Pico, you connect your Pico to your PC or your laptop via the USB cable, and then you're going to launch the software. Once you've launched that, um, you connect the desired cable to the relevant channel of the scope, and then the other end of the test cable, the other end of the test cable to earth, and then the component to be tested. And then that's it, you're ready to start looking at data. So we're gonna show you a couple of videos now. Now the videos we're showing, we had a transporter in the other day, a common rail transporter, two litre common rail transporter. And we're gonna show you how easy and how quick it is to set your Pico scope up and start capturing data. People think that it's very time consuming and laborious uh, and it kind of scares people off. We get the sense um, this uh, this webinar and the course, the day course, is going to try and bust some of those myths. The Pico scope's really no harder to use in your multimeter. So what we're going to show here is a, a quick check of a hall sender, camshaft sensor on this, uh, this transporter. Um, what we're going to do is use the Pico scope's guided test plans for it, so it'll almost show you exactly how to set the Pico scope up, where to put your wiring, um, how to set the scope up, uh, and then what to look for in a pattern. That's a very common issue with Pico scope. You see a, a scope pattern on the screen and you start scratching your head, well, is that what I should supposed to be looking at? Is that what I should be seeing? The Pico scope in many, many cases is actually gonna tell you what you should expect to see. OK, so what we're going to see uh, is go through the procedure of, of, uh, of selecting on the guided test plan how to test a hall sender. As you can see, it even showed you a brief description and an illustration of how a hall chip works. 
Um, the Pico software is really good in that respect, and that works for many sensors across many different cars. The, the library of, of guided functions and guided test plans is really quite extensive, certainly for the automotive software anyway. Uh, in the next video we're going to see, uh, we're there, still on the same car, testing the same component. We're going to start the engine now, and we're going to actually start recording and capturing some data on our Pico scope. Uh, notice uh, you'll see the actual data moving, as indeed it should when the engine started. We'll also pan across and show the same test results that you would be seeing with the same sensor on our multimeter. So you can see then a visual representation of our hall pattern. And as you move across and pan across to the, the multimeter, you'll just see a voltage fluctuating. From that voltage fluctuating, you're never going to be able to see whether that hall sender is giving out a good signal there. OK, so we're going to play the next video now. wave pattern. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to a case study that we had sent to us. Um, this is on a BMW M57 engine, a, a garage, uh, one of our customers sent this in to us. Uh, it originally started with a, a, a forker that we must have all seen before for work on BMW, which is a 4501 uh, exhaust gas control deviation. Uh, the garage had done all the usual checks, uh, vacuum supply uh, into the solenoid valve, which you can see in the picture, out of the solenoid valve, they checked to see if the ECR was opening. Even went to the point of scoping the air mass to see if we can, when the ECR is open, if we can see uh, a, a signal change that the air mass is kicking up. So, um, as you can see from the, the, the information below, uh, how these older air mass meters work, when, when there's, sort of, uh, it's a, we're looking at the kilohertz change. So, ECR closed, they can see that the kilohertz is 2.4 kilohertz, ECR open, they can see that the air mass dropped to 2 kilohertz. So they knew that there was something was going on, they knew that the cooler wasn't blocked, but every time they drove the car, the 4501 came up. So it's a really good bit of diagnosis that the technician did for utilising the Pico scope. What they did, he put, as you can see, there's an example of a kit, and then a little red circle is the TV, but this, this is the pressure uh, transducer kit. We use a multitude of, uh, of assessments, but in this instance, we use it to measure the vacuum going into uh, the EGR valve. Now, the technician had that set up uh, just on the pressure uh, that the, the vacuum line stuck. And as he drove off the ramp, he noticed that the uh, vacuum depleted and all, all he had done was press the brake pedal. Um, he then set up to monitor the brake pedal switch and he noticed that every press of the brake pedal, the vacuum would deplete. Um, ultimately, he found that by, by smoke testing the system, he found that it was the servo. So you can see the smoke from in the car, that's the result of the smoke test. But it was the servo uh, <coughs> leaking, causing the vacuum. Uh, supply to deplete and thus bringing on the EGR uh, control deviation. Um, would you found it without the scope? Yes, I'm pretty sure we would have done it in the end, but the Pico scope made it uh, a, a lot quicker to find and it was, you know, it's a very good use uh, uh, of the Pico scope and the associated parts. Of that. Moving on to the Autologic products now, obviously, Pico scopes are a very welcome addition to the Autologic suite that we can help you with. Uh, but between the products that we sell, um, well, there's a very good chance that an Autologic product or an Autologic branded product these days is going to help you try and fix a car. Uh, and that's pretty much what Autologic's always been about, trying to help technicians fix cars faster. Now, moving forward, um, what we plan to do is incorporate the very latest version that the Pico have out there, um, which is going to be the tablet-based version, 
onto the drive through unit. So we, we hope to integrate the system that works in soon. It's part of our continuing uh, mission to, to, to constantly develop the drive track for So keep an eye out for that. So should you come on the course, you get to meet myself, um, Lawrence, or uh, Simon. Um, this is a basic outline of what's going to happen throughout the day. So 9 a.m. arrival, 9.30 start. Uh, breakfast and lunch obviously provided. It's going to be a mixture of theory and hands-on training. Um, again, as it said there, with the emphasis on hands-on, um, we are going to almost step back and get you guys involved, um, putting the equipment on the car, setting it up, getting used to it and getting a feel for it. Um, there'll be two of us there, two trainers on the day, uh, 12 delegates split between two vehicles. Um, we're going to cover everything we've talked about today and more. Um, and obviously, if there's more questions um, or you've got something that you've had an issue with, obviously come down, talk to us about it, and um, we'll get through it together. Thanks very much for attending today. Uh, thanks for listening. And again, any questions that you may have, uh, we haven't had any handed to us during the webinar, but any questions that have been passed through to us, uh, that will be on a Q&A sheet. It will all be emailed afterwards. Okay. And if any of you are uh, looking out for, for the cost of the PICO, we're going to be, uh, there will be an email sent to you with a list of all the kits available from what we offer from PICO and the prices will be on that email. Look forward to seeing you on the course where we can get you working on a PICO scope, setting it up, getting hands on on some cars, and seeing how easy it is to work with PICO scope. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.